how to prepare a 3M air filter for a face mask. Hi guys, Dr. Lily here with my pocket pediatrician. So I've spent just about every waking minute of the last 13 days researching and working and designing and trying to figure out the best way to make a mask at home. As you know, we're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and a lot of our healthcare workers don't have the personal protective gear that they need. Now, just to be clear, I'm a pediatrician. I've worn personal protective gear. I've done disaster drills but I am by no means an expert in personal protective equipment. There are people who have PhDs in this. I do not. I've talked to some of them. I've talked to a number of different companies. I've gotten a lot of ideas. About a year ago, I made a video for you guys about how to do your research online. And when I tell you I've done my research, I am not a PhD in this. Think of me as somebody who went online and read a bunch of articles and did their research about vaccines. I'm not an expert. I'm just gonna tell you the things that I've learned because I'm seeing a lot of questions that keep coming up. I'm seeing a lot of ideas that actually will make it harmful. And I wanna just share with you what I've learned in doing this research in the last couple of weeks. Again, I've read a few articles, but there's not a lot. I have talked to some experts, but they can't really tell me anything on the record because they work for companies that don't wanna be sued. But this is what I've learned and I wanna share it with you. Just like them, I don't wanna be sued either. So I'm trying to educate you, but you're doing all of this at your own risk. And if you're wearing one of these masks, you're wearing the mask at your own risk. Last week, I published my most popular video I've ever made, and this is the updated version of that. I found out a lot of good information in the week since I published it, so I wanted to share that with you, update that, and give you the best information possible. Yesterday, the Joint Commission, which is the regulatory board for hospitals, said that workers could be permitted to bring in their own equipment. They said that homemade gear would be a last resort, and that's how I feel. If I'm going to work, I don't really want to be wearing a shower curtain or a garbage bag. Doctors and nurses are dying of COVID, and this is kind of a last ditch effort. I'm hoping it's better than nothing. I'm pretty sure it's better than some of the other homemade options that I've seen out there. And let me just explain to you why. This is a surgical mask. It's made out of a papery kind of material. It's got ear loops. I put it on my face, has a little nose bar, and it goes around my ears. This mask is great for protecting you from me. It catches my droplets into the mask. It might be beneficial if I had an onion bagel for lunch. You wouldn't smell my breath as badly. And it's great for droplets. Now, if I'm wearing a surgical mask around a COVID patient 100%, I want my plastic face shield over the top so that that patient's droplets aren't getting to me. But COVID is very small. It's about 0.12 microns. So when I look at this mask, there's no seal. I can blow up and I felt my eyelashes move. So this mask does not protect me from particles in the air. It protects me from droplets, like spit droplets and sneezes and things like that. But if COVID is that small and it's lingering in the air, there's tons of places for it to get in. This is not a great option. So this is a real N95 mask. This was made by 3M. It's what I used for my fit test when I went back in in November. Now when I put this mask on, two elastic loops, it's got a foam bar here and a metal bar and pushes into my face, messes up my hair. It's not that comfortable, but I can breathe through it. If I blow up, don't feel anything in my eyes. Now, I saw a guy wearing one of these in Walmart the other day, except he had it on like this. I don't know what he was doing, but a lot of people in the community are wearing these incorrectly and they're taking them away from the healthcare workers who need them. So healthcare workers who have to wear an N95 have to get fit tested every year for it. What that means is we go in, they put a standard mask on us, uh, we have to stand in like this little tent kind of thing, and then they take this really smelly, awful stuff that they spray in the tent, and we have to jump up and down, read a poem, and they keep spraying this awful stuff in there. And if you smell it, sometimes your eyes will water, it'll give me a migraine, it tastes awful. So we get fit tested and make sure there's no leaks in the seal. The seal is the most important part of the mask. It comes in different sizes. My friend who's an infectious disease doctor has to wear a small, and in her area they're out of smalls, and she's really struggling with finding the equipment that she needs so that she can take care of the COVID patients. By the way, if anybody has any smalls that they would be willing to give to her, I'd really appreciate that. Let me know. But these are the kind of shortages we're facing right now, and we need to come up with a solution so that we're not strapping garbage bags on ourselves and going in to face COVID patients. So when we look at these homemade masks, people are making different styles. A lot of people are making simple cotton masks that have the ear loops, and they're basically simulating a surgical mask. This is great for the community. My friend had a picture of her kids and herself wearing these and saying, my mask protects you, your mask protects me. They're great for catching your own droplets. If you're going to the store, it's a good idea to wear them. The CDC is starting to recommend that with the only caveat being don't take them from healthcare workers, but if you have a mask available, it's a good idea so you keep your droplets to yourself. For a healthcare worker though, who's got their face-to-face -face contact with 
very sick patients, this is not a good idea. So some studies have actually shown that these masks may act as kind of a sponge for all of the viral particles. And you've got this wet piece of cotton sitting there up against your face, soaked in with all the COVID particles, and you're basically just increasing the concentration of what your exposure is. So if you have to wear a cotton mask, definitely wear a face shield over the top so you block some of the droplets, but it's really not a good idea. So then people got the idea of, well, let's make a pocket and we can put a viral filter in there. Great idea, but the problem is with these pocket masks, you have a, a pocket where you can take a filter in and out. Some of these styles still are like this with the ear loops. So when you go to put that on your face, you just don't have a tight seal. There's gaps here, there's gaps here, in here, can very easily pop off. So what's the problem with that? At least this filter is giving me some protection, right? No because what happens is that air is looking for the path of least resistance. If you have air particles coming at you that you're trying to breathe in and out, and it's, there's a filter here that's reducing the airflow, where is the air gonna go? Right through here, right through here, up under here. And then what's happening is that I'm actually concentrating unfiltered air into my mouth. So wearing a pocket mask that doesn't have a good seal to your face is not a good idea. There is a design that's very popular right now called the Olsen design, which bends up on the face, has a seam down the middle, somewhat similar to this, but what they're doing in order to get a good fit test with it is they're surgical taping using skin tape and taping a seal around onto the mask wearer's face. It's a very innovative idea and there are studies showing that they're passing the fit test with that, so that's a good way to go. But if you're gonna put a filter in a mask, you have to have a good seal. That's why I came up with this design and I probably made about 10 different masks trying to come up with what would be similar to the N95 style. Basically this mask is a six by nine square that I've put elastic in going through both sides. So there's a tight elastic strap on my chin, another one that's on the bridge of the nose, and then two more elastics running through here. So as you can see, it gives me a similar hairstyle to the N95. And I have a tight seal in all directions. Sometimes I have to model my nose a little bit and down here. Now with this style, I'm not saying it's the best, it's just an idea, I'm sure it can be improved upon. But with this style, I do feel like my breathing is similar to that with the N95. Again, I would still wanna wear a face shield with it because again, it's a cotton mask and it's not gonna block droplets. So I need both of these and a pair of goggles if I have them. When these filters are inserted, they have to fit every corner of the mask because you want to have filter in every single possible place that air could come in. Now I will say this mask does have a good seal. One of my concerns about it was moisture building up because this is made out of cotton. So at one point I put a Ziploc bag inside with the filters to see if that could block some of the moisture from getting to the filter. I actually couldn't breathe. After about 30 or 40 seconds of wearing the mask, I started running out of air. I got lightheaded. I had to get the mask off very quickly. Don't try it at home. But to me, that seems like it does have a good seal. I have worn real N95s at work. And when I wear them, I'm a little bit sweaty. I'm a little bit short of breath. It's a little hard to breathe, but you can still breathe through it. I would say this with the two filters in it is very similar to that experience. I am still able to breathe. Last night I had to take my mom to the hospital. They had a COVID tent set up outside and there were COVID patients there. Anytime we were exposed to other people, I wore this mask, I was comfortable, I was able to breathe. Again, it's not a real N95, but it functions fairly similarly. I can't smell, which is good. I'm taking this off because it's hard to hear me. Anybody wearing a cotton mask should have some sort of face shield to block droplets from getting onto the mask. I have a separate tutorial about how to make those face shields pretty quickly and easily. So again, these are all just ideas, but I wanted to share the information that I found with you. So as we're innovating together, we can try to build on each other's ideas and come up with the best possible solution for our lack of personal protective equipment for healthcare workers and for the community. And you're making these at your own risk, you're wearing them at your own risk, but I just wanted to show you some of the things I learned so you're not using heat guns and trying to wash and dry or reuse your filters uh, or making a mask that doesn't have a good seal and is allowing airflow to go around the mask. So what I wanna talk about first is our filter material. Step one, select a filter with an appropriate filtration level for viral particles. There are a lot of different filters out there. There's a MERV rating, M-E-R-V, which is minimum efficiency reporting value. The MERV level can be somewhere between six and 13. If you want to filter viral particles, you must have a MERV rating of 13 or higher. Anything less than that is not going to catch viral particles. Now there's another rating that was designed by 3M. It is called the MPR, which is the Microparticulate Performance Rating. 
This rating starts at 300 and I believe goes up to 2800. If you're using a 3M product and you need to filter viral particles, you need something with an NPR of 1500 or higher. This filter is 1500. It says bacteria and virus on here. This one's even better. It's an NPR of 2200. So it also gets bacteria, viruses, and then it also gets candle soot, exhaust particles, and ultrafine particles. But if you're gonna use one of these products, it has to be 1500 or higher. Don't waste your time on the lower stuff. It's not gonna work, and you're just gonna be wasting time and money. Step two, clean all your work surfaces, wash your hands, and wear a face mask. So the first thing you need to do is just go ahead and assume that you already have COVID. A lot of people are asymptomatic, and in the video I did about the coronavirus pandemic a couple weeks ago, I said we should all just behave as if we already have it. So when you're preparing these masks for other people, the first thing you wanna do is clean all your surfaces. You should wash your hands. And I would recommend wearing a mask yourself so that if you cough or expel any bodily fluids, you're not gonna be putting your fluids into that viral filter that's gonna go up against somebody else's face. I'm not gonna wear a mask in this video because it's hard for you to hear me when I wear the mask, but when you are at home, wash your hands frequently, wear a mask, and just remember these filters are gonna go up against a healthcare worker's face and they really don't want your germs in them. Step three, note the direction of airflow and mark your filter accordingly. This step is vitally important. The side of your filter is gonna have an arrow on it right here. This arrow points in the direction of airflow and it needs to point towards your mask wearer. So if I were to take this filter out of the casing, I would want the arrow pointing at my face like this. So what I'm gonna do is make a small dot on my filter and that way I know that I'm gonna have to mark once I cut this up, every individual filter. Now I was suggesting to mark it front and back and for some reason there was a lot of confusion about front and back. So what I would suggest is that you make a very small HCW on the side of the mask that is gonna face the healthcare worker. That way we know there's no confusion between front and back when this goes in the HCW side is the one going towards your mouth in the mask. Step four, put on clean new work gloves. Your next step is work gloves. You need clean new work gloves that haven't been used for another project for this. Now I had some people commenting that I wasn't sterile. Of course I'm not sterile. This is my house, not a sterile OR. There's a big difference in a hospital between clean supply and sterile supply. Sterile supply means something was produced in an entirely sterile environment. There are levels of germs that are tolerated, not tolerated. Everyone has to wear shoe covers, head covers, masks. Things are processed and sealed in a very specific way. None of us are working in a sterile environment, but we do want to be in a clean environment. I bought these for $1.97. It's worth it for a new pair of gloves that are clean and not going to have any germs that you're going to be putting into your filter. Absolutely need these gloves. When I tried to do this the first time, I poked myself so many times I was bleeding all over the place. And we definitely don't want to give our healthcare workers masks full of our blood. So these kind of gloves, something leather, is an absolute must. Step five, remove the cardboard casing and wrap. Removing the cardboard casing can be a little bit difficult with gloves on, but it's very important to wear the gloves because that metal mesh will poke you as you're trying to remove the cardboard. Sometimes you need to take your scissors and cut little snips at the cardboard, but be very careful to make sure you're not cutting your filter in this step. Step six, remove the metal mesh. Now that we have the cardboard and the plastic off, we need to get the metal mesh off. There is a lot of glue on the edges. Sometimes it helps to start in a corner and then start peeling up and away from your filter. Do not use a hair dryer or heat gun for this step. You can use your scissors to gently snip at the glue, but I don't recommend trying to cut the metal mesh or your filter. Make sure you're only cutting glue. Also, it can help if you try to roll the metal mesh onto itself so you don't have a lot of jagged edges dangling there trying to poke you. Once you have it off the first side, flip it over and do the next side. This whole process took about 12 minutes to get all the mesh and cardboard off. Now that we've got all of our stuff off, the filter itself actually stretches out to 102 inches long. This was a 20 by 25 filter that I got and it's significantly larger than the size of the box. Step seven, remove any remaining glue or cardboard on your filter. Sometimes when you're getting this stuff off, it's easier to just kind of run your scissors 
downward on the glue, not with it open, but just as you're peeling it off that way, you do as little disruption to the filter material as possible. Step eight, cut the filter to the appropriate size for your mask. The current size mask that I have is a six inch by nine inch mask. So since my filtrette is 25 inches wide, that works out that I can do two nines across and then a six inch, and that makes it exactly 25 inches, so I'm not wasting anything. Also, I would like the accordion shape to go horizontally across my mask because I think that's a little bit more comfortable. But in the interest of using all my materials, since they're expensive and difficult to prepare, I'm going to have some where the stripes go vertically and some where they go horizontally. Some people suggested that I iron my filter and make it flat. I don't want to do that because the way this filter attracts viral particles is through electrostatic charge. There is some physical filtration, but the the viral particles are so small, they're 0.12 microns, that they require the electrostatic charge to work effectively. If we wash it or we heat it or iron it, it's not going to be effective. If you're using a different template, such as the Olsen mask, you can cut your filter according to the designated pattern. Step 9. Label each individual filter with the front and back and filtration level that you use. Remember that airflow arrow we talked about where the arrow is pointing towards the healthcare worker and we made the dot on the side of the healthcare worker. When I cut my mask, I carefully did not flip any of them. I kept them all flat so that they're all in the same way. And I can go back now, look at where my dot was, and then what I'm going to do is and I'm just going to write HCW on each of these and the filtration level, so 2200. That way, I know when these go in the mask, they need to go in this way, facing me. The HCW goes towards the healthcare worker. Front and back is probably okay also, but for some reason, people were getting a little bit confused about that. So just remember, the arrow points towards the healthcare worker. You put your dot on the healthcare worker side, and then you write HCW on the side that is supposed to face the healthcare worker. And make sure you put the filtration level on there because you did all this work to get a really nice filter. This is not a baby wipe. This is something really actually useful. So you want your person who's going to get the mask to know that this is a real filter. Step 10. Place your cut filters into a Ziploc bag and seal it immediately and leave them there until they are worn. Now that my masks are fully processed, they're labeled. They say healthcare worker on the 2200 filtration level on this side. All I need to do is put them in a Ziploc bag immediately. I don't want these sitting around the house because what's going to happen is they're going to fill up with particulate matter, just dust and other moisture and things like that. And by the time they get to your healthcare worker, they're already going to be clogged up and they're not going to work. I want the electrostatic forces in these to be fully ready to go. So I'm just going to fold up four of them maybe. I'd probably do better with the quart size because then I wouldn't have to fold them so much. And I want them to stay in this bag until they're ready to be worn. Now these filters are one use only. They cannot be washed or dried or sterilized in any way that I know of that's safe. Uh, people are studying this right now, but as far as I know, there is not a safe way to do that right now. So once you wear them, that's it. So if you make a mask, you would need to give two filters for every day that the mask is gonna be worn. So I would probably send several bags of these along with any mask. Step 11, carefully discard any used filters before washing your mask. Do not contaminate yourself when doing this. So this mask is 100% cotton. It does have elastic on it, so it cannot go into an autoclave, but it can go into a washer dryer. It washes well and it holds up pretty well with high heat and everything else. Um, when I take these filters out though, at the end of my shift, I don't wanna take them out and just throw them on the side or anything like that. These are full of viral particles. So that means I need to take it out, immediately discard it and wash my hands take my mask and immediately throw it in the laundry because this probably is also going to be soaked. Hopefully not too badly because I was wearing a face shield, but you have to be careful not to contaminate yourself when you're removing these viral filters and discarding them. Don't leave them lying around. Don't let your kids play with them. Don't. If you're exposed, these are going to be full of COVID and you want to get rid of them. So let's talk safety for a minute. I've had so many people message me or text me and say, hey, you're putting fiberglass up against people's faces. I don't know what air filters are made out of fiberglass, but I went on the material safety data sheets for these and these are not made out of fiberglass. My understanding from the people I've talked to is that if they were, they would say it on there. They would say fiberglass. I'm gonna post the link for the material safety data sheets on these. You can look for yourself and make your decision. But as far as I can tell, there is no fiberglass in this that says there is no risk with inhalation, with contact with skin, and with contact with eyes. 
If anybody has any information that this is unsafe in some way, please let me know and give me a source. I'm only doing this because I wanna help people. And when we're in this last ditch effort of trying to create personal protective equipment, I'm trying to come up with a solution that's safe and teach people how to do it appropriately. Again, I really don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to give you the best information that I have. You're doing this at your own risk. If you're wearing one of these masks, you're wearing them at your own risk. But as far as I can tell, there's not a safety concern of having this mask against your face. If anybody has more information, please share immediately. Also, I do have a separate tutorial on how to make this specific mask if you're interested in that. I also have written instructions and I can email them to you. Uh, just let me know, check out the video and let me know what you think. And if you see any design improvements, I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Again, this is a work in progress, so I might be making updates, I might be making changes. So make sure you subscribe, hit that little red subscribe button with the alarm bell on it so that you get a notification if anything changes. And definitely, I love your comments. That really helped me a lot with the last video. That's why I was able to make this updated version and I was able to make some new connections with a lot of different people. So comment, share, let me know what you think. You can also email me if you have any questions or want the resources. You can reach me at mypocketpediatrician at gmail.com. Stay safe out there. This is Dr. Lily with My Pocket Pediatrician. Thanks for stopping by. When the doctor says my child has a condition, I'll learn more at My Pocket Pediatrician.